you're trying to make massive changes, aren't you? I mean, Absolutely. You, you know, it's no secret that you are, you, you would love Scotland to be independent and that's your yeah. main mission, isn't it? Yeah, because, I mean, if you take what's happening right now, Scotland, we voted against Brexit. But if you're basing your decision on what it means for independence, let me be very, very clear. The only sensible and logical vote is one for Scotland to remain in Europe. Uh, but the decisions are made, the decision was made by the public yeah. and it was a, a national referendum and... You kind of, you the sort of are making my... Well, the Remainers mm. won in Scotland, that's, you, you're kind of making well, you, my they point. But if you're basing your decision on what it means for independence, let me be very, very clear. The only sensible and logical vote is one for Scotland to remain in Europe. The view is that uh, I'm not in favour of um, Scottish independence. The referendum did take place and a decision was reached on that. What I'd much rather is a Labour government given the chance to ensure that Scotland also gets the investment it needs, also gets the social justice it needs, and also gets the job opportunities for young people which have been denied. I mean, John McDonald said something very specific, that a Labour government would not block another independence referendum. Do you agree? Well, it's not up to Parliament to block it, but it's up to Parliament to make a point about whether it's a good idea or not. I do not think it's a good idea. Right, so when you say it's not up to Parliament to block it, that means a Labour government would not try and block it? I would advise that we don't have another referendum. I'm not in support of Scottish independence. What I am in support of is justice for Scotland, and that means investment in Scotland by a Labour government for the whole of the UK. With the headlines being dominated, as of late with Corbyn and the idea to effectively oust Boris Johnson if everybody was to get on board via a vote of no confidence. It was only a matter of time before Helmet Head managed to wrangle her way into the spotlight. Or rather this time, after Corbyn said it was not up to Westminster to block a second referendum in the case of Scotland, Helmet Head was quick to respond with a manipulative thank you that we'll come back to a bit later. Now, let's just say it all goes to plan and a no deal is stopped via Corbyn's attempt or by another method. Then the SNP's mandate for independence would no longer exist. So there would be no referendum for Corbyn and or Westminster to block or grant. Corbyn's claim effectively would rely on Brexit occurring, as Brexit occurring would indicate as being quote unquote dragged out of the EU against our will. But blocking no deal and moving towards an inevitable remain would therefore mean we were not dragged out against our will. Thus, making this referendum that they periodically refer to a pipe dream, effectively, non existence. For the best part of two years now, the SNP have been calling for a people's vote or for Article 50 to just be revoked, contradicting their claims of wanting independence, first and foremost. Independence was always the plan B to fall back on if the UK in the end was to leave the EU. The SNP want to stop Brexit, first and foremost, and they supposedly want independence to boot. But it's kind of amusing how they never seem to explain this when it's occasionally brought up. Take this for example. Are you so, why are you so against um, Great Britain being independent of the European Union then? Because you want to stop Brexit but you want to yeah. be an independent from the UK. I think the two things are very different. I mean, if you look at the European Union, every single member country in the European Union is an independent country. Um, many decisions are taken on the basis of unanimity, so countries have vetoes, others on qualified majority. Mm. So individual, look at Ireland just now, a small country, but it's got enormous clout in Europe. Contrast that with the position Scotland's and we're kind of being told we have to leave the European Union no matter what we want. So it's about... Well, because equality. you're part of the country, though. Exactly. But all those, you, you do have your own parliament, uh, but the decisions are made... The decision was made by the public yeah. and it was a, a national referendum. And you kind of... You the sort of are making my... Well, the Remainers mm. won in Scotland. That's, you're, you're kind of making well, my they point. They won in London too, but so what does that mean? Well, London... I'm a great fan of the great city of London that we're in just now, but it's not a country in the way that Scotland is. And you mm. kind of make the point, if, if the argument for Scotland remaining within the current system is, well, you just have mm. to accept being outvoted all the time. Do, do you know what I want to ask? We're going away from politics a bit. I mean, politics are stressful. I don't care who you are. Notice how she never actually answered the question that was given to her there in regards to wanting the UK to remain in the EU while simultaneously, supposedly, wanting independence. It's remarkable. Truly remarkable. The reality of the matter is, the SNP, or more, particular, more in particular, 
helmet head want to remain in the EU regardless of whether or not it means part of the UK or as an independent quote unquote nation. Guaranteeing and securing the EU membership is the only thing that the SNP seem to be caring about at this point in time. That is the number one priority. If the claims were really that true and sincere from Helmet Head and Bitter Blackford and Mari Black and all the rest of them in regards to wanting independence first and foremost, that's all they want and that's all we keep being reminded that that's all they want, then why didn't they vote for Theresa May's deal? It might have been a shit deal, it might have been detrimental to the UK, but according to the SNP, independence is number one priority and everybody in Scotland apparently wants it, therefore it wouldn't have mattered one iota the negative consequences that may or may not have occurred from Theresa May's deal, as it wouldn't have affected us. But of course, they never voted for it. They instead voted against it. Very strange, very strange thing to do. It's also very strange for the SNP who supposedly want independence, first and foremost, to come away with things along the lines of not ruling out any option whatsoever in regards to stopping Brexit. Now, why would you want to do that? Because Brexit occurring Brexit happening grants you your mandate, your independence referendum. The reality of the matter is, she would rather the UK had a second vote and voted to remain in the EU so she wouldn't have to risk a second independence referendum. But let's just say that somewhere down the line, it ends up being the case where an independence referendum is granted, whether it be via their mandate stipulations be met or if in fact they manage to dupe the government and of course get one bakshi just make sure to remind yourself that it's not independence no matter how many times helmet head may try to tell you that it is it is in fact a referendum and whether or not to leave the uk in favor of rejoining the european union it's not independence they've hijacked the independence movement these fake nationalists have hijacked independence. They're quite prepared to take independence, India F2 as they keep, take, as they keep calling it, and lead people down the garden path.